Amen, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Ah, glory. I just noticed I got a little indicator now on the side of my uh, video uh, that uh, shows me that the volume's operating. Which the reason I'm saying that is because once again I made a video. This time, although I I noticed, you know. A year later now that we have a little cancel button over there and instead of sending those out but most of the time what happens is that uh, I won't have noticed that the volume hasn't taken place well now I have these little indicators uh, that are showing up that actually show that the volume is going forth and uh, I unplugged the magic jack again <laughs> I just got done talking to the sister Shabila here a few days ago and Forgot to unplug it, but uh, I wanted to, uh, to share with you about my concern about uh, giving the milk of the Word of God. I believe, scripturally speaking, that a period of time was to come that we were to no longer give the milk of the Word of God, and I will tell you that I believe that the milk of the Word of God is in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I don't believe we'll get into the meat of the Word of God until we get into the Acts, into the letters written to the churches. But, uh, so for that reason, I felt a little bit of a foreboding and a leading of the Spirit. And I've told you before, I've become very sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. <laughs> and if I sense that, uh, you know, there's something wrong, then I check myself on that uh, immediately. And I believe it had to do with uh, my sharing the milk. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to go any further in uh, reading of the New Testament, Ma Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, but what I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do that will be all right with the Lord is that I will try to keep us where we're at. I think it's like the fifth chapter of uh, Matthew that we started to do a study. Uh, I don't think we got any further than that, but uh, I'll double check. I will go through, and that's where the Beatitudes are at anyway. And so what I will go do is that hopefully you will be encouraged to begin to study the Word of God, you know, and hunger after the sincere milk of the Word of God. Now there is the milk of the Word of God, which is our reading of the Word of God, and then there is the sincere milk which is our study of the Word of God. So there's a difference. So you'll see it's written both ways. There's the milk of the Word of God, and then there is the sincere milk. Okay? So, well, obviously sincerity is, rather than just rereading it, you actually read it from your heart to begin to understand what is being said, and that requires an actual study. Okay? That, to me, is the sincere milk. So anyway, uh, that being what it is, and uh, talk to uh, a sister. Uh, I I usually try to uh, get in. We'll get, I'll get some PMs between uh, a few of the sisters that are out here, and we'll discuss uh, uh, certain aspects. I share that with them, okay, with my thoughts regarding that, and they counsel me, you know, and I receive counsel, uh, which we're supposed to, okay. You know, I, I'm doing my very best, amen, Jesus, uh, to help you to understand the truth of the actual working of the Holy Spirit in a person's life, especially in the ministry, amen, Jesus, and what that is supposed to actually look like. So if you've got people out here who are sharing the Word of God at you, and they're not explaining the details of how they're coming into what they're understanding, where it came from, uh, what the process was, okay, and or sharing with you that they've gotten counsel from other brothers or sisters on YouTube and PMs, okay, and they're discussing, reasoning with one another about these things. If they're not sharing that with you and they're not explaining that to you, um, uh, then I think you're, you're leaving yourself open for a lot of different things that can go on, okay? 
That's what this deception was all about. And that's why the elect, the election of grace and or the elect, okay, which I've explained to you before, I believe there are two different groups. There are two different footmen. One natural Israel, one spiritual Israel. Anyway, if it were possible, that's what the word said, if it were possible, even they would have been deceived. So this was to let us know that pretty much just about everybody else other than the election of grace is going to be deceived either completely or in part. Okay? So <clears throat> I just want to help you to understand that these are, these are things that you as a viewer have a right to expect to receive from them who are sharing what they believe to be the Word of God is. If they're not being open books about who they are, their life, confession of sins, uh, openly sharing from the sincerity of their hearts, who they, through their chastisements and trials and struggles, okay, everything that has to line up with the Word of God regarding who and what we are as witnesses of the work and the will of the Father in our lives. Okay? And if we're not sharing that with you, then, I, I, again, I, I believe you're leaving yourself open to all kinds of possible deceptions. Uh, the testimony of our faith, in season and out, that's what that means. We were to be ready, prepared, in season and out, to give a testimony and a witness as to our hope. And that's what I've been doing now for almost a year. Sharing every aspect and every avenue of everything that has taken place with me in my walk for the past 35 years in the faith. So, uh, I just, I hope you hold others to the standard that I'm sharing with you in regards to they're sharing the word of God with you. I think it's very important that you do. And that you expect that from them. And that you literally come out and ask them, Well, listen, brother, would you mind sharing, okay, something about yourself regarding, you know, the working in and the working out of the word of God in your life? You know, the chastisements and the scourgings of the Father, of which the word says, that every son and daughter will have gone through chastisements and scourgings. Or they're not. They're bastard children. Well, how am I going to know if I'm talking to a son and daughter? They'll be able to share with you what the chastisements and scourgings were. If they're not willing to share that, then how can you have a witness? You can't. Don't assume that these folks are who they are without testing that spirit, without expecting that... <laughs> I, that thought never entered my mind, not from the get, to come here and share with you anything other than the work and the will of the Father in my life. That's the testimony. That's the witness. My speaking these words that come out of the Bible, okay, is something I've got come and memorized. That. That isn't the actual work. That's what was written of those in that period of time, that they were given their testimony regarding that work. They were sharing what was taking place in their lives. That's how they could share it with others. That's how it was written. It wasn't something that just got in their heads and they decided to say. Okay? These were practical experiences written down of which they were sharing among the brethren and warning one another concerning these things. Because they had dealt with that personally themselves. So, as far as the actual studying of the Word of God in the milk, I, I probably won't be doing that. But I will be going back over it. And like I said, from chapter 5 right on, past the Beatitudes, and anything else along the line, okay, that is there to be shared I'll go to the verse, give you the chapter and the verse, and then share that particular revelation that I have come into regarding different things 
that the Lord had taught. Uh, and then I'm dealing with, amen, Jesus, the revelation and or the meat of the Word of God and not the milk. You will have had to have read the Word, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and studied the Word, okay, in order to get to these pearls that are there. I'm simply going to share some of those that have been given to me, and, and I can give them to you. So that way I'm staying away from sharing the uh, giving suck. That's what it means. Woe on to them who give suck. Now God hasn't got it in for mothers and babies who are nursing. That isn't what that's saying. That isn't what it means. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Uh, then I wanted to go over real quick about uh, the Cactus Community Church thing. Uh, thank God in the dream, uh, as I remember it, I was standing by the gate post. And I shared with another sister, my sister uh, Bonnie. <laughs> and she uh, made mention, I, and I, I hadn't really thought about it, but Ephraim stood at the gate. Now, whether or not that has something to do with uh, gathering in the wheat, Standing at the gate, whatever, I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make is that in the dream, I wasn't actually in the Cactus Community Church. Because i got to tell you, amen, Jesus. I, I've been there a few times, and and I have one video where I shared about their having all of her calls and stuff like that. And all of that is just, it's foreign to me. It's foreign to me. It's like an alien religion. <laughs> I... I, there's a couple of reasons I don't think I'm supposed to be there. Number one, uh, scripturally speaking, the word says not to enter into your brother's house in the day of his adversity. And that this is true about some of you who may mistake encouragement with entering into your brother's house during the day of adversity. Now, that adversity, amen, Jesus, are the trials and testings of faith in a person's life. Now what happens is, is that we'll see somebody going through something and immediately we want to try to do something to help, you know, that go away. Like it's some kind of a terrible, awful thing that they should be being tried and tested. Well, <laughs> what we're doing is enter into our brother's house in the day of his adversity and we've been warned not to do it. We may get a rebuke uh, spiritually and a rebuttal as a result of that. And we'll say, well, why would that happen to me? I was only trying to do him a favor to help him out. Well, brother, you entered into his house during the day of adversity. There was a trial and a testing going on of which God did not want you to interfere with. <laughs> and it came back on you. <laughs> Trust me, the devil's right there waiting for you to walk outside of the uh, word of God because then he can... Do whatever he wants. That's how we're tried. That's how we're tested. That's, that's what that sifting of the wheat was all about. Okay, as long as we're being led by the Spirit of God and being obedient to the Spirit of God, there will be trials and testings, but they won't be anything like in the natural realm regarding certain things that you can get involved in because of the leading of the flesh. Okay, that's a wholly different thing. Now, there are other trials and tra uh, testings that go on, spiritually speaking, regarding... Uh, our walk of faith, where we have moments of dry moments of which we can't sense the spirit of God being with us, and we go, you know, we just feel awful about those periods of time, and we cry out to God. Well, He's, he's wanting us to seek after Him, okay? And you'll read all these things. It's a beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful journey, okay? A lot of it doesn't seem that way in the beginning, but that's because we haven't matured to the point where we recognize and understand that chastisements and the scourgings and what they're all about, okay? Now, I, I had shared in the, in the previous video, Amen, Jesus, that you should be expecting this from anyone who is sharing the Word of God. On YouTube, especially. And if you're still a member of a household of faith, I'd be checking with that pastor. Okay, if they're not sharing the living reality of the chastisements, the... Uh, confession of sin uh, in a general way. You don't have to get down to the nitty gritty details of everything. I just lust of the flesh, pride of life, so on and so forth. Okay, in a general way. 
okay, but at least making confession, okay, of the sins that you've committed, of which, you know, there's a working in and a working out. If you're not sharing the working in, and uh, those who are on YouTube are not sharing the working in and working out of the reality, okay, of the transforming into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ in their own lives, if they're not sharing that with you, where is the witness? Where is the testimony? It says, be prepared in season and out to give a testimony, a witness, as to the reason for your hope, for your faith. We are to be prepared to do that at all times. So in other words, I should be able to have gone over the, the walk that I've, over the past 35 years and see, okay, where God has worked with me, in me, and through me to transform this life. Not everything and everybody around me, but this life. Into the likeness and the image of his son. Hatred, malice, envy, strife, greed, whatever those things might have been in your life, which if they... Well, this is why it's a witness, okay? If there isn't some sin in a person's life, or there hasn't been some chastisement or scourging, the Lord says that every son and daughter will be chastened and scourged. And any son and daughter who has, who claims to be a son or daughter who has not been chastised or scourged, he's a bastard child. He's not a true son or daughter of God. So they have to be able to share with you the chastisements and the scourgings of God in their life. This is all for the protection, you see. There's a very great deception going on, and it's coming through those who are deceived. Okay? They're liars. They're thieves. Okay? And you'll find that they will not open up, okay, open books read of by all men, sharing, opening up from your hearts the reality and the truth of the life that has been transformed. Okay? So there will be sin, and you will have had victory in areas over things. Lust. Uh, my brother, Operation Reed Soul, and a couple others have attempted to share areas in their lives, and that's good because it shows there was a work that went on. But if you're receiving testimony from people who haven't even bothered to go that way with you, I'd be real, I'd, I'd check them out. <laughs> I'd be real suspect, okay? Because I don't personally, be, I, when I started on these videos, that was the very first place I went, was to share the journey of the walk of faith with you. And then along the way, I started to reveal different aspects of my life and things that I have done, okay? Alcoholism, drug addiction, having been in prison one time in my life, uh, stole a car when I was 13, okay, theft, uh, 14, 13, 13, I think, maybe even 12, who knows, <laughs> so long ago. But, okay, things that I've done uh, that were wrong, okay? Um, adultery, okay? Uh, different aspects related to the Word of God and sin in my life that uh, had to be removed. These things, I mean, if not a living reality in your life, if you're not going through these trials and these struggles, there's something wrong. Okay? Because you will, if you're being transformed in the likeness and the image of Jesus Christ, there will be a work that needs to be done. That's why I get on some of these folks out here who just come across as religious bigots to me. You know, they never say anything personally about what's going on in their life, but they're the first ones to judge everybody else. I guess. <laughs> Mr. God have mercy, he's got one out now. Uh, what is it? Uh, according to the gospel of Mr. God have mercy, uh, the road to hell is paid with good intentions. Now that is a lie right out of the pits of hell. But for many of you who have been listening to his channel, 
Well, it must be the truth because he always says, he always speaks about the Word of God. Well, okay, see, you're, you're falling for stuff there, amen, Jesus, because you're looking from the eyes, the natural man, okay, and hearing from the natural ear. You're not discerning spiritually, okay? And so when they make little statements like that, well, it's an acceptable statement because it sounds right to me. Well, it's not right. It's not written in the Word of God. As a matter of fact, the only judge of the thought and intents of the hearts is God, not Mr. God have mercy. So, now, you can take that for what it's worth. Amen? Now, and the road to hell is not paved with good intentions. I assure you that if the intentions of your heart before the Father is to do His will, there isn't anything in this life that God will not do to take down the mountains and remove the idols and do everything else He needs to do to get you to where was in your heart. He said he'd give you what was your heart's desire, and many of you have gotten your heart's desire. As a matter of fact, you've been totally paid for everything that you would ever felt that you were owed according to the Word of God. You've already got it. You've got no more coming. Because that's what was in your heart. That's what you desired. Some of us, even though may have gone through all kinds of hell and high water, and been everything under the sun wrong, in our hearts we have desired that we be transformed into the likeness and the image of Jesus Christ, regardless of what we saw of ourselves or others might have thought of us. That's what was in our hearts before the Father, and that's the reward we'll receive. We may not have got anything here on earth in the natural realm so that we might boast of it, but I assure you, we will receive the desires of our hearts and the thought and intent of our hearts be judged by the Father. So, people are, a lot of people out here talking about stuff they don't know nothing about. I'm going to tell you that ahead of time. And they're going to be judged for it. They, and I've, I've shared this before. A lot of you need to just shut your mouths up because you're going to get yourself in more trouble now than you ever thought about getting in. Him without mercy will be judged without mercy. And if you don't know what it is to sin and fall short of the glory of God, and you don't have it in your heart, the compassion in your heart, to have mercy on someone who has, then you're a phony hypocrite. You are a worthless nothing. Salt to be cast out in the outer cart. And good riddance to you. I don't know where all that came from, but... Amen, Jesus. It must have been meant to be said. Uh, I just wanted to share that uh, I will be <coughs> going over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but in the areas of the revelation and the meat or in the pearls that I've been given. I won't be doing a reading, studying of it because I believe it's the milk of the Word of God and that we were warned not to nurse. Okay? I don't want to take on the responsibility of nursing anyone in, the, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the milk. Okay, But I will share the plurals and I will share any revelation regarding those in an orderly fashion going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're at about uh, chapter 5 and uh, from that point on, the next time I come on, the Lord has revealed and I've read over those things and revealed to me some of the things that I have already come into and been refreshed by, well then I'll share it with you in that particular chapter, in that particular verse. And those of you who are studying Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John can then go there and perhaps be given an eyesight or insight into something that you may not have seen or would not have seen otherwise. That I will do according to the will of the Father. <coughs> We're... Uh, I just want to hit on real quick too about uh, the necessity, okay, for what I've shared with another sister regarding the, uh, a period of calm before the storm. 
I believe that was Sister uh, Shemila. We had talked about uh, the calm before the storm. And uh, that's why it seems that spiritually speaking, where it's, it's, it's just a, like a, a, a restfulness of, you know, anticipating, waiting upon the Lord, because whatever work and will of the Father, of the shaking of heaven and earth, and the gathering of the wheat, and the binding of the tares, and all of those things that I've been sharing for the last year, those things are about to begin to take place. To what extent? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Because I've shared this with you before that I firmly believe that that as the, the first flock was established in the fervent love of the brethren, which is our first love, that the finished work and the gathering will be based upon that same fervent love of the brethren, that we were to return to our first love and our first love in the church on the day of Pentecost was a fervent love for one another. And I'm not talking about this patchy on the back, how are you, and don't even talk to each other for a week. That is not the fervent love of the brethren, okay? A love that goes far beyond any earthly love that you've had for your children or your husbands or your parents. A fervent love of the brethren supersedes that, is greater than. What did the Lord say? That if you as parents know how to give good gifts on the earth, how much greater are the gifts of God. So God's love is so much greater when we speak of a fervent love. It's far beyond, okay, whatever we've shared, even in the most intimate of times, in the natural. It supersedes that. That gives us an understanding of how great that love is, but until you actually have laid down your lives to one another, so that nothing else, not your finances, not your, nothing in this world should even matter to you regarding the fervent love of the brethren. That is what we're going to be gathered into in the love feast of which after the door is shut, we, as the body, okay, will begin to share. So in the gathering of that, I'm certain that there will be a connection to that in the fervent love, in the gathering. As part of the binding of the tears. And uh, what did he say about the whore? He was going to expose her nakedness. He's going to lift her skirt up and expose her hypocrisy, her nakedness. Okay? So these things are about to take place in the Jesus. And they have been in part. Amen? But, uh, so... Uh, that's all I really had to say tonight. I just wanted to share a little bit and uh, get back in contact with you because what did it say? It says, as you see the day drawing near, gather yourselves together all the more. Uh, unfortunately, as you can tell in the church world, they're still just doing Sundays and maybe Wednesdays. And like I said before, <laughs> the vast majority of even their own flocks don't show up on Wednesday. So they're still doing one day a week when the Word of God says, when you see the end come, gather yourselves together all the more. So they're, you're in disobedience. Well, by the grace of God, amen, Jesus, we're able to gather ourselves together two or three, four, five times a week right here. Amen? For those who are participating, amen, in the comments, I, 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 can't, ur encourage, I cannot urge you or encourage you Many more than than please, please, please. If it's just to say hello, participate in the breaking of the bread. Don't sit out there being silent. Share what God has given to you. Surely something that's been said on these videos has caused you to say, Whoa, you know what? That reminds me of this. The Holy Spirit has brought something to your remembrance. Write down what it was 
without changing it none. Okay, well, this is what I was thinking, Brother Andrew, when you were saying what you were saying like that, and share it. That's the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Many of you <laughs> really don't understand what it is to participate in a spiritual body. So I'm hoping that maybe I'm getting across to a few of you that you'll begin to partake in the spiritual breaking of the bread of God. When you have the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance something, when you're listening to a video, that's what you're supposed to write down in the comment. Okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, I love you guys. The Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Have a good evening.